Uh, tonight we're here showcasing a tasting for the Wine Press Northwest Awards that uh, were selected previously earlier this year. And so we have a bunch of people here sampling what we think were some of the big hot winners and uh, certainly some of the more popular wines that we notice that we sell. And some of the double platinum winners. Right. So you got what, about a dozen wines that we're uh, pouring tonight? Yeah, something about like a that? dozen. Yeah. All from Northwest? Yes. All from so, the Northwest. Yeah. Yeah, primarily Washington, but all yeah. Northwest. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about the store. You guys have been in business a long time. Uh, the store was started in 1969. Uh, we bought it uh, in uh, 1997, January of 1997, so it's 14 years this year, this month. Um, and uh, we've, in the time we bought it, we've expanded from uh, uh, approximately 500 wines to uh, 5,377 wines as of last count, with a very international selection. Uh, the Northwest wines, in particular, the Washington wines, have grown dramatically during that time. They represent about 25% of our of our stock. Wow. Well, let's talk a little bit about the economy because I suspect you guys know more about what kind of wines people are buying than just about anybody. So, in the last say two years, when things have kind of imploded, uh, what trends have you seen with wine buyers? Well, I, I think what we've noticed in the early, in the beginning of the implosion, if you will, uh, is people looking for really inexpensive wines. So I think people bought $10, uh, certainly we saw a lot more under $10 uh, purchasing going on. I think what we've noticed in the last six months is that people are willing to spend a little bit more money, a little bit more money with some perceived value attached to it. So even though the wine is $25, they're willing to spend it uh, if they're saving $10. Um, that goes on up to you know twenty dollars to eighty dollars. We're really starting to see people feel a little more comfortable spending their money. Um, they just, I think, are looking for a perceived value that comes with it. Yeah, they're still looking for good deals. We 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 are being offered more good deals because of some excess supply uh, in the market uh, than we ever have, and uh, the customers are getting great values, and, and that's what they want. Uh, our our sales are uh, roughly equivalent. We're up a little bit, but roughly equivalent to what they have been the last couple of years. But we're selling more bottles, uh, and and the average price point is way down. So you guys haven't really lost business. You just uh, uh, you're selling more wine just at a lower price point. That's exactly so, right. Okay. Let's uh, talk about Washington wine for a minute because you guys sell an awful lot of it. So. What, what trend do you see? I think when we talked a couple of years ago, uh, red blends were really coming on. Is, is that still a big seller with Washington? Yeah, we're still seeing a big uh, red blend uh, trend. I, I think what we're also seeing is people a little less brand loyal. So while people still want red blends, they're actually willing to step outside the box and try maybe something that's a little less known, uh, maybe something that's not as familiar to them that they've seen in the grocery store, uh, because now they're more comfortable with the idea of the blends and where they're coming from. Um, and so learning a little bit more in that respect that they're willing to kind of step outside their comfort zone. We're also starting to see a lot more under $20 reds, under $20 Washington wines, but in particular a lot of under $20 red blends. People are taking excess juice that they can't sell for $35, putting it, blending it with other um, wines and, and making a nice uh, $19 or $15 red blend, and we're selling a lot of that. Mm. That's a really popular category for us. That category almost didn't exist a couple years ago. Everybody was selling $35 Syrahs, and, uh, and and there's only so much room for $35 Syrah. Now we're seeing a lot of $20, $15, and $20 red blends. Speaking of Syrahs, it seems like everybody's kind of down on Syrah these days. That uh, you know the Australians are having trouble selling wine, and I mean, you just hear a sad story. But you know, what's the story from a retailer's point of view? People are, are not buying as much Syrah as they were. So, uh, so I, I think we're starting to see some prices come down, which I think would help. Um, I think when there's the, the value and they're saving, they're willing to go back to Syrah. I don't think that it's that they don't like it. Um, I think that it started getting a little too pricey and it fell in the wrong time, frankly. Mm -hmm. When okay. all the prices started going down, Syrah was left at $35. Yeah. And, and people aren't buying $35 wines in the quantities that they were buying them two years ago, mm -hmm. just in general, whether it's Syrah or anything else. And there's not very much uh, $15 Washington Syrah on the market. There's mostly $35 Washington Syrah and up. Right. And as a result of that, uh, the price point, I think, is what hurt them more than the quality. The quality of Washington wines is better than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. It goes up every year. I'm, I'm amazed at how much better Washington wines are today than they were five years ago or ten years ago. 
uh, 14 years ago when I bought the company, we had one shelf 18 feet long and we barely could fill it. We had uh, some Columbia Crest, we had uh, Canoe Ridge, some Sam Michelle products, and not much else on that shelf. Hmm. And here it is 14 years later and there's 650 or whatever the number is, current number is, of Washington wines, Washington wineries and lots of stuff to choose from. Uh, it's, it, and the quality's great. It's just that at $35 a bottle, uh, Syrah's not going to sell. Not, not in the quantity that it did a couple of years ago. Last fall, uh, after harvest, we got some numbers that showed that uh, Cabernet actually surpassed Chardonnay in total tonnage in Washington. Uh, it seems like Washington cabs have gotten a lot of press the last few years between Cool Cedar Creek and um, the, the Columbia Crest getting the top wine in the world. What's your guys' opinion of Washington cab? I've always thought that Washington cab was underrated in a big way. Uh, I, I remember uh, telling Gary Figgins 12, 14 years ago that I thought his cab was better than his Merlot, and everybody was talking about his Merlot. And I think that's the case more still. My people uh, originally talked about how great our Merlots were, and they're great, and how great our Syrahs were, and they're great. Um, and nobody ever talked about the cab, and the, the cab is world-class quality cab if it's made right. And we have a lot of people in the state doing it very well. Mostly what happens is it, get, it tends to get blended with some really good Merlot, and we have good quality Merlot in Washington State. Um, and as a result, you end up with a really high quality blend or a really high quality cab. Hmm. Let's switch gears a little bit. You guys have gotten into the online uh, wine retail big time uh, in the last uh, year or so, really. What uh, What's this transformation? You guys bought a, another company. Tell me about this. We bought a company by the name of madwine.com uh, a year and a half ago. We've recently relaunched the site in June of last year. We had it completely redeveloped and relaunched it. Uh, we want it to be, and, and we're coming close to it now, we want it to be the largest uh, seller of Washington wines uh, on the web. Uh, we have a huge selection of Oregon Pinots as well, um, and uh, it's a whole new game out there. Uh, it's, it's very different doing business out on the web than it is doing business at a, a brick and mortar retail store. Hmm. Uh, the, the, the industry is changing very rapidly and it's growing very rapidly. Uh, our sales during the fourth qu- on Madland during the fourth quarter of last year were up 80% over the previous year. Wow. Uh, and you just don't see that in retail stores. But the online business is, is booming uh, out there. And especially, I think there's a, a real nice demand for some Washington wines. You know, if you go to uh, Phoenix or you go to Denver, it's real hard to find Washington wines that are of any, any kind of quality uh, or any kind of quantity even. So uh, this gives people around the country that have read your magazine and other national magazines that have given uh, good write-ups to Washington wines that give them an opportunity to buy them. Great. What are, the, what are some of the challenges? I suspect shipping has got to be the biggest headache with, uh, with online uh, retail. Shipping is the, <laughs> the largest headache. It is um, not only expensive, it is um, tricky with the weather. The weather really... Um, we, we mail to a lot of people on the East Coast and the Midwest and... Um, these things are heavy, yeah. and they are. It's one of the heaviest things you ship on, on the web. And as a result, um, you have a case of wine that weighs 35 pounds, or a case of champagne that weighs 42 pounds, uh, and it's it, if you try to ship it around the country, it does get expensive. There's no doubt about that. And then it seems like laws are different in every state, so you've got... We're limited. There's about 15 states that we cannot ship to, so that presents a, a small challenge, frankly. Um, the people that know we can ship to their states order from us, and uh, and I think we do okay. Um, weather is probably the next largest challenge. In the summer, it's too hot. In the winter, it's too cold. So you're working with some really interesting windows in places like New York or Florida, depending on the time of the year. Hmm. Well, um, hey, I appreciate your insights into this, and uh, it's been fun to chat with you. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Andy. All right.